Welcome everyone. Welcome to Saginaw First Assembly. Thank you for joining us today. In fact, uh, you're joining us right now. Would you take a moment and say hello to everyone uh, who is in this online community? This has become such a great community during this season. Uh, so take a moment, say hello in the chat. I want you to know that I am so thankful for you and we would love to connect with you. Uh, if you would like information about our church or would like to connect with us in any way, uh, simply text the word CONNECT to the number on your screen right now. It will send you to an online connect card. We would love to get to know you, help you any way that we can on your journey with Christ. If you have a prayer request or even a praise report of something that the Lord has done, just text the word prayer to that very same number. We would love to have our prayer team, our pastoral staff agree with you in prayer for any need that you may have. Finally, if you have recently received Christ, let us know. Text the word believe to that number. Uh, we would love to know about your commitment to Christ. We've got some big things happening uh, around here. Next Sunday, October 18th, we launch our children's ministry. I want you to know that our leaders have gone through an extensive training. Uh, our room is ready. We are excited to minister to your children safely here at Saginaw First Assembly. And you know what? Uh, this is another opportunity, a great opportunity to serve. If you are able to volunteer in any capacity, we would love to have you on the team. If you are able to help us launch Kids Ministry, please contact Rebecca, our children's director, right here at the church office. We would love to have you a part of making that happen. At this time, we would like to take a few moments and in our service, just bring our gifts to the Lord. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. Thank you uh, for all of you who give online. Uh, we just are so grateful to see God continue to build his kingdom. Today, as you give, remember this great promise from the Lord. In Isaiah 58:10. it says, feed the hungry and help those in trouble then your light will shine out from the darkness and listen to this and the darkness around you will be as bright as new i want you to know that as you give today the darkness will be dispelled from around you and god's promise is that any difficulty and things that you're walking through will shine like the noonday sun. I'm praying that blessing upon your life today as you give. Let's bow our head. Let's just pray in this moment. Would you just agree with me together today as we pray? Lord, thank you for this incredible promise that you have given us. Lord, in this moment, we are so thankful that we can give, that we can help those in need, that we can continue to see the darkness dispelled around this world. And in the same token, Lord, you bring light to our situations, to our lives, to our homes. God, I pray your incredible blessing on each and every gift, on each and every giver today. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, let's continue to worship the Lord. Let's lift his name together as we worship him in the next few moments.
What an incredible time of worship. I love being in the presence of the Lord. Today, uh, we launch a two-week missions emphasis that we have, and, and I am so excited about what God is going to do these next two weeks. Uh, I really uh, have been excited and anticipating this day for a couple of years now. Uh, today, we have a very special guest with us who has a very special word for our body. Dr. Ron Maddox has been a lifelong missionary and just an incredible pioneer of missions in some pretty strategic places around the world. Today, he is bringing us 
a word. And I encourage you over the next few minutes to soak in uh, what the Lord wants to speak to each and every one of us, what the Lord wants to speak to you uh, through Dr. Ron Maddox. Be blessed and be encouraged by the word of the Lord today. It's great to be with you today. I've really been looking forward to this. I have the opportunity to minister to, uh, to this great church, and I'm just excited about what God is doing and what God is doing in missions today. You know, we've been in it for a long time, my, myself and my wife, Penny. Uh, January 2021, 44 years as Assemblies of God missionaries, and what a great journey this has been. And I want to talk to you a little today about the missionary journey uh, and, and, and just everything that goes along with that. And, uh, you know, anybody who's been a missionary for very long has used this passage of Scripture. It's, it is the missionary passage of Scripture, Matthew chapter 28, beginning with verse 18. And here's what the Word of God has to say. And then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to minister to this great church. I pray that I might have an anointing of the Holy Spirit upon my life and upon the ministry of this word. Let there be a demonstration of the power of God in it. And I ask your blessings upon these people in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And amen to God forevermore. Now, I, I know you've heard many passages or sermons on this passage of scripture, but I just want to uh, turn your attention to just two words. The first two words in verse 19 where the scripture says, therefore go. You know, in our 44 missionary career, our, our ministry has been an itinerant ministry. By that, I mean I'm always traveling. I'm always on airplanes, uh, going from uh, various locations to other locations in ministry. And, and so I'm always on airplanes. If I, let me tell you how much I'm on airplanes. On one particular airline, Delta Airlines, I have flown six million miles on Delta Airlines. And let me tell you, I'm tired. I mean, I'm tired. But that's what you got to do to go. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're riding on airplanes all the time, you sit down next to somebody, and invariably, the person who's sitting in the seat next to you wants to engage you in conversation. You know, they, uh, they want to talk about where, where you're going, where, you, where you've been, and, uh, and everything. And, and, and you just get, and sometimes, sometimes you just get tired. I say, Lord, will you let the next person that sits to this person just kind of walk them through the four spiritual laws? But, you know, will you just give me a break this time? But, but invariably, conversation. Uh, one time I was, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, on a flight and a man sitting next to me, I mean, we weren't even in the air. We were just on the taxiway going out to take off. And he began to engage me in conversation. Where, where, where are you going? You're from this city or whatever. And then he got to that inevitable question when he said, what do you do for a living? When I said I'm a missionary, suddenly he kind of lost interest in the conversation. He, did, he, he, he didn't want to talk about that. He just kind of picked up his... Uh, uh, his, uh, uh, you know, his uh, uh, magazine, airline magazine and all. And that's kind of the question that most people get to. Another time I was on a flight and, and uh, we were engaging in conversation and the guy got to that same question. He said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a missionary. His response was so different than everyone else's. He just sat there for a moment, just silent. And I could tell that he was kind of in deep thought. And then he turned to me and he said, you know, he said, it must be tough to be a missionary. Uh, nobody had ever responded that way. And I kind of began to give it some, th you know, uh, some thought because I, he, he had thought about that question. And I, I went over my, my missionary career and thought about sometimes that it was tough. I mean, difficult things. I've been, I, I, I've been in difficult circumstances twice in our missionary career. Uh, our whole family have been in automobile accidents that, that, that only uh, if God hadn't undertook, uh, uh, some of us or all of us could have been killed. And, and there's been other times I got very sick. My first term of missionary service, I, I was in the hospital in Hong Kong and I, and, 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 and I nearly died. And, uh, you know, just a lot. I, I remember uh, some of the tough times. I was doing a good news crusade in 
Thailand one time, and, and sometimes when I, I would do these Good News Crusades, uh, people would come up and they would, uh, they'd been stirred up by some of the uh, Buddhist leadership there, and they'd come up, and while I, right while I'm preaching, they would, they would curse, and they would threaten, and they would shake their fist at me. And one time while I was preaching, right while I was preaching, a bullet whizzed past my head. <laughs> well, uh, it had been thrown. But I knew what was in his heart, you know. So, so anyway, I mean, so there's been some tough times. But then I thought about some of the great times. And, the, and I turned to him and I said, you know what? I said, it's not been tough being a missionary. I said, in fact, it's been a pleasure to be a missionary. I got to my destination. I got to the hotel and I just couldn't shake that. The, the pleasure of being a missionary. And I sat down at the desk in the hotel room and I wrote out three pleasures of being a missionary. And I want to give that to you today. It's a little bit about the, uh, the missionary journey. The first pleasure of being a missionary is the pleasure of anticipation. That's when God first calls you. I mean, I don't think there's anybody more excited than somebody that's freshly called to be a missionary. And, uh, and there's that pleasure of anticipation, of uh, anticipating that, 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 that they've been called and they're going to get there and they're going to be on the mission field and they're going to preach to the lost. And, you know, when, when, uh, when new missionaries come to your church and, and they're preaching about getting out there the first time, they're so excited. They're living that pleasure of anticipation. I remember when God first called myself and my wife to the mission field. We were, we, we were not long out of Bible school. We were up in West Florida. We were uh, the panhandle of Florida. We were, we were pastoring a little tiny church. I say a little church. We had 11 people on Easter. I mean, it was a little church. But, but God began to bless and it began to grow. And when we got up to about 50 people, we decided it's time to do a missions convention. Well, we didn't know how to do anything. We invited a missionary in and, 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 and he did everything. And, and on Sunday morning, he was leading us in our missionary faith promises. I'd done that growing up in my home church and my wife in her home church and at Bible school, but this was different. This was our church and we were excited. And I'll always remember holding that missionary faith promise card in my hand. And I had my pen and I said, Lord, what do you want from us this time? And God spoke to me. You know, it's one of those things, it's not audible, but it's so close to being audible. I mean, you're hearing it in your heart. And when I said, Lord, what do you want from us this time? God spoke to my heart and he said, this time I want you. And he called us to Hong Kong. I mean, we were so excited that God had called us, but we couldn't do it yet. Because in those days, there was only only one way in uh, to be a missionary. You, we didn't have so many different things. You had, you had only, only one category, and you had to meet uh, these obligations. You had to be at least 25 years of age. We weren't. You had to pastor at least two years. We hadn't. And you had to be ordained. We weren't ordained yet. And so God had called us, but I, I had to continue on and fulfilling these requirements, but uh, we were excited. God had called us. We were so filled with the anticipation of fulfilling the call of God. Finally, we met all the criteria. I wrote a letter to Assemblies of God headquarters to the Asia Pacific Regional Director. Uh, Hong Kong was in Asia Pacific in those days, and I wrote, uh, God has called us to be missionaries to Hong Kong, and, uh, and, and we're ready, and we want to place our application. A couple of weeks later I, uh, later, I got a letter back from him and, uh, and uh, the, uh, from, uh, from the regional director, Brother Hurst, and he said, Dear Ron, he said, uh, Hong Kong is a, is a major city. The national church is very mature, and you're a young man. He said, I recommend that you just wait a few uh, years and reapply later. I mean, I was crushed. I didn't know what was going on, so I thought, I'm going to call up there. And so I called to Assemblies of God headquarters to the missions department and I asked for Brother Hurst's office and, and uh, his administrative assistant secretary answered the phone and I said, uh, I'd I, I like to talk to Brother Hurst. He said, well, he's not here yet. Can I help you? I said, well, I sent in an a, a, a letter asking for an application to, to, to go to Hong Kong. He's a missionary. And, I, and I, I've fulfilled all the requirements. I'm ordained. I've pastored long enough. I'm old enough. And I said, but I got a letter back from Brother Hurst, and he said he wants me to wait a few years. 
She said, I don't know what was wrong with him. She said, I'll just put your application through. That's when I found out who's in charge at Assemblies of God headquarters. It's the secretaries. Now we're really excited. We got the application. We filled it out. We came to headquarters. We were approved for missionary assignment. I mean, we were living that anticipation of doing what God called us. We began to travel in the churches and we raised our budget. And I always remember when my wife Penny and I got on the plane with our daughter, Wendy, uh, two years old, and we flew out to Hong Kong. And as we began to land in Hong Kong, we looked out and we saw the city, and, and our hearts leapt with anticipation. We got up the next morning and we began to just kind of move around the city. We, the city buses didn't start till about five o'clock in the morning and we, we were waiting at the bus stop. We got on a bus and we just rode the bus. We rode around all day. We rode the bus, bus around all day. We didn't want to ride around all day. We just didn't know how to get home. We didn't know, we didn't know where to get off. But I got off and I found the address of where we were staying in a temporary place. And we got in a taxi and we showed him that. We got home. Then the pleasure of anticipation of learning the language, Cantonese dialect of Chinese. Cantonese has seven tones. And our teacher, Dr. Chun, he wanted us to learn those tones well. And he led us like somebody leading music. He said, Nay, Jong, mm, Jong, Yi, Say, Chang. I went, Nay, Jong, mm, Jong, Yi, Say, Chang. <laughs> then he went, Nay, Jong, mm, Jong, Yi, Say, Pen Guo. I went, Nay, Jong, mm, Jong, Yi, Say, Pen Guo. <laughs> hey, uh, he said, uh, 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 Do you like to eat an orange? Do you like to eat an apple? <laughs> I was speaking Chinese. I mean, I was excited. I went to the marketplace. I wanted to put it to use. I used everything. Uh, you go to our apartment, there was fruit everywhere. <laughs> we were living the anticipation, being there, learning the language, doing the ministry. And then the pleasure of anticipation gives way to the pleasure of experience when you're doing it. I began to preach. I was preaching in, in youth camps and churches. And, 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 you know, people began to come to Jesus. And we were involved in youth ministry. And people were uh, coming to God. We were participating in new church plants. And, and uh, I, 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 I traveled there to a creative access uh, environment for where... where uh, where in that particular nation it was illegal to worship God. And I met with house church peoples, and I, and I sat with them. They, they soon learned that I was ordained, and, and they said, teach us. And I thought, teach you? You people are heroes. Uh, uh, every time you gather together in the name of Jesus, you do so at, at, at risk to your personal freedoms and, 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 and liberties. But they said, teach us. We don't have an ordained minister. And, and, and we sat cross-legged on the floor. And you talk about the pleasure of experience ministering to men and women who, who just uh, they, they live uh, uh, with the risk of, a, of, of persecution, of being put in jail, their freedoms being taken away, the honor of ministering to people like that. And then after several years, we were asked to go over to Thailand and take over an open-air evangelism crusade ministry. And, and we went and, and we did that, going up country, preaching to people that that where the church didn't exist, that, that never heard the name of Jesus, never, never held a Bible in their hands, and telling them for the first time in their life that there is a God who loves you and gave his son Jesus for you. I wish I could tell you what it's like to stand on a platform before hundreds and sometimes thousands of people that never before had heard of Jesus and giving an invitation and under that starlit tie night, I give the invitation for them to accept Jesus and they step out of the darkness of that night and the darkness of their lives and they come forward and, uh, and they follow after me in prayer and after 10,000 and more unanswered prayers to the idols and the images that uh, could not answer. They prayed the first prayer in their life that ever had an answer. When they followed after me and they said, Oh God, I never heard of you before, but I heard tonight and I believe. Take away my hurt. Take away my pain. Take away my sickness. 
my sorrow. Take away my sin. And you could literally see the very moment that all of the demons that had come into their lives when they worshipped at the spirit houses moved out because Jesus, the Son of God, was coming into their lives. Oh, the pleasure of experience, doing it, preaching to the lost, naming His name where it had never been named, erecting the cross where it had never been lifted up. I did many of these crusades and... And uh, normally they would go and they would set up ahead of me and they would let me know when everything was ready. And I, and I remember one time we were doing a, a, a crusade down in a sea by the name of Potty. It was a couple of hours below where we lived in Bangkok. And school was out. My daughter, 10 years old, Wendy, she said, Daddy, could, could I go to the crusade with you? And I said, well, sure, baby, you can, you can, you can go with me. So we were driving down there in our speed light van, and, and, and Wendy said to me, she said, Daddy, she said, could I sing in the crusade tonight? And I said, well, baby, I didn't even know that you sing. She said, well, I never had before. But she said, I've got a cassette tape of Sandy Patty. Do you remember Sandy Patty? She said, I got a cassette tape of Sandy Patty, and I thought I would just play this tape and I would sing with it. And I said, well, baby, you sure can. And so that night, my little daughter, 10 years old, stood on that platform in a beautiful little tie outfit, and she sang a duet with Sandy Patty <laughs> to the lost, mostly Sandy. But as Wendy was standing there singing to the lost, something began to move in her spirit. Something began to touch her. And today, my daughter and her husband and their children are missionaries in Northern Asia. Another time I was preaching in a crusade in, in uh, Muktahan. It was right on the banks of the Mekong River, just across the river from Savanakhet, the second largest city in communist Laos. We couldn't go there. The government would not allow us to go. It was forbidden to come in. There was no freedom of religion. We were on the banks of the river and we turned some of our speakers in the direction across the river. And so as I would preach in the dialect uh, that, uh, that was spoken on the Thai side of the river was the same as the dialect that was spoken on the Laotian side of the river. And so I would preach and every now and then I would turn and I would look over to the, to the Laotian side of the river. And I would say, you people over in Laos, when I give the invitation tonight and I call people forward, you can accept Jesus as your savior too. Just follow the prayer. And each night I gave the invitation and people came forward and I led them in the center prayer. And I could look over and I could see people on the Lao side. I couldn't hear them, but I could see as their shoulders were kind of raising and falling as they were following after me in prayer and accepting Jesus into their lives. Oh, the pleasure of anticipation preaching to those uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, forbidden uh, uh, access, restricted access settings, uh, telling them about, you see, uh, you see, the government could keep us from going on in there physically, but they couldn't stop the sound of the gospel. They couldn't stop the movement of the Holy Spirit from going and penetrating their lives. They couldn't stop them from accepting Jesus as their Savior. The pleasure of experience doing it. One night uh, while I was preaching there in Muktahan, I'd taken my little son Samuel, he was like three years old, and I took him to the crusade with me. And every night when I was up on the platform preaching, he'd sit down in the front, everybody sat on the grounds. And one night as I was preaching, something must have spooked him. He jumped up from where he was sitting, he ran across the altar area, up some steps that were on the front of the platform, he ran across the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the platform. I move around a lot when I preach. And he just leapt on my legs. And he wrapped his arm and, uh, arms and legs around my leg. And for the rest of the night, it was preach a while, drag Sam a while. Preach a while, drag Sam a while. But while my son Sam was wrapped around daddy's legs, listening to daddy preach the gospel to the lost, something began to bubble in his spirit. And today, Sam and his wife and their children are missionaries in Thailand where he grew up. Oh, the pleasure. Planning the church, preaching the gospel, 
discipling believers, raising your family, your children, to go in to the family business, the pleasure of experience. But then as the years go by and your hair turns white, as mine has, you look back with perspective, with the pleasure of remembrance, the things that God has done up to now. And you ask yourself, has anything I've done made a difference? I preached uh, those evangelistic meetings in, uh, uh, in uh, Thailand for many years. I planted many churches. And then I was able to open Laos as an Assemblies of God mission field and open Cambodia as an Assemblies of God mission field, reopen Vietnam as an Assemblies of God mission field. And I was asked by our leadership to become area director over New Era, Peninsula Asia, Burma, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand. And so I released uh, the ministries that I was doing, a crusade ministry and a church planning missionary in Thailand in order to give leadership to this. It'd been, it'd been a while now that since I had been to, the, uh, uh, to many of these churches that I planted. And so I told one of the missionaries up there, Kelly Robin, I said, Kelly, it's been a while since I've been up there. I'd like to go up and visit some of the churches that I planted. He said, Ron, they'd love to have you. He made the itinerary. The first night I was in a little village by the name of Koksawang. It was just a tiny little village. We went up there, we preached the gospel for the first time. The gospel took hold and we planted a church. We built a building. And so that night, I was there, and, and, and the leader, uh, the, uh, the pastor, he, 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 led in, he led in worship and prayer, and, and then he introduced me. Now, normally when they would introduce me in Thailand when I was going to preach, they would say, But he didn't say that. He said, did you hear the difference? <laughs> See, the first one, they would introduce me and say, we're glad to have Pastor Ron with us to minister. But he didn't say that. He said, we're glad to have Father Ron, Paul Ron, with us to minister. He said, Paul Ron, Father Ron, he said, he is our father in the Lord. He said, when he came to Koksawang, we were worshiping Buddha, and he brought us Jesus. He said, Father Ron is our father in the Lord and the father of our church. Let me tell you something, friends. When somebody says something like that, it makes you feel pretty good. Our Father in the Lord and the Father of our church. But he didn't stop there. He went on. He said, He said, but besides that, Father Ron is like the Apostle Paul. <laughs> I thought, like the Apostle Paul? Like the Apostle Paul? Wow. But then he went on. He said uh, he was like the Apostle Paul because he planted our church and he went on to other countries to minister there also. He said, but the Apostle Paul wrote letters back, but Father Ron never did. <laughs> you know, sometimes people can take you right up here and then just bring you right back down to reality. But I, I mean, Remembrance. What, what has God done? Reliving those wonderful things, perspective, seeing what God has done. After the service, we sat as their custom. They rolled out the rattan mat and, and uh, they began to put food down. We eat in a Thai way, get a little sticky rice in your hand, break out some, scoop up some food and eat it. And, and as we were doing that, I began to notice some people that were missing. And I said, well, hey, what about brother so-and-so? He's out here. They said, oh, a while back, he, he passed away. He's with Jesus. I said, well, what about sister so-and-so? And I said, oh, a while back, she, she passed away. She's, she's in heaven now. And I, I, I noticed uh, one of the people, uh, uh, mother Somgit, me Somgit. I said, me Somgit, you nigh. Where's mother Somgit? They said, oh, she's in heaven. 
The next night I was in Nawa, the first church that I had planted in Thailand. The service was so much the same. And again, after the service, they rolled out the rattan mat. We sat cross-legged on the floor, and we're all eating. And again, it had been a while since I'd been there. And I said, well, where's this person? I said, well, Jesus, where's this one? Passed away there in heaven. And then I noticed that Mother Neam was not there. Mother Neam was the first one in the village to accept Jesus. It was around Mother Neam, Menium, we call her in Thai. It was around Menium that we established the church. And I said, Menium, you and I. And they said, oh, Ajahn Ron, Menium passed away about six months ago. She's in the arms of Jesus. And suddenly it dawned on me the reason that we had come. The reason we left family and friends and homeland and possessions and traveled half a world away had been realized in the lives of those people. We found them at the feet of the Buddha image and we brought them to the foot of the cross. From darkness to light, from earth to glory, they had made the journey. And we realized that we'd been successful in our missionary calling. Now, since then, many things have happened in our lives for 20 years. I've been regional director for uh, Northern Asia. I continue in my missionary ministry. But what a remarkable journey that this has been. And it's because people like you in churches just like this made our dreams come true. And the dreams of those people who laid in the darkness of the night and the darkness of their lives and they dreamed is there a way out is there a way beyond this demonic oppression is there freedom and you empowered us and the missionaries you support to take this precious message that there's a way out of the darkness and it's Jesus Thank you so much, and God bless you for your faith, for your prayers, for your giving. Wow, what an incredible message. Uh, Ron, thank you so much for sharing your story and sharing what missions is all about around the world. And church, I wanna say thank you uh, for your faithful giving in missions. Ron just shared with us some incredible stories and what God is doing, a faithful missionary all around the world. We support over 60 missionaries every single month, and that is because of you, because of your heart towards missions. And I just wanna, as your pastor, say thank you so much for your faithfulness in missions giving. And I want you to know that this year, we have already as a church given over $50,000 to missions. Church, that's incredible. That is 16% higher this year than last year. Even through these days that we're living, even through this pandemic, your heart for missions shines through. Thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness. I want to do something today. Uh, I want us as a church to bless Ron Maddox and his ministry, uh, his missionary journey uh, is incredible. He continues to lead uh, missionaries and reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, we want to receive an offering, and you can do that online. If you've given online, you know how that works. We'd love for you to go to saginawfirst.church and hit give, and it will lead you through that opportunity to really bless uh, Ron Maddox. We want to do that today. We're going to be doing that in our live service, and we want to give you that opportunity today as well. Would you pray and consider a gift today to this ministry? Uh, 
we mailed this past week uh, out to you uh, one of our uh, missions pledge forms that we are very excited this time of year as we ask the Lord, what can we do to further your kingdom? What can we do to send more missionaries out uh, all around the world to present the gospel, to bring people from earth to glory, from the feet of idols to the feet of Jesus? It's uh, because of your faithfulness that we're able to do that. I would ask you to pray. Uh, this week, even now, uh, ask the Lord, what, what can I do? Lord, what can I do to be a part of this missionary uh, experience to help propel your gospel all throughout the world? Uh, over the next week, we're going to be collecting these. There's also a way that you can do that online. Uh, if you text missions, to this number on your screen right now, it will send you to a virtual uh, pledge card where you can jump in, be a part, let your gift on a monthly basis matter to the kingdom of God. I wanna thank you for being faithful to tithe. And above that, we say, Lord, how can we uh, give above and beyond our tithe to make a difference in this world. I want to say thank you for trusting Saginaw First Assembly with those gifts. We make them count. And every dollar given in missions goes to help missionaries to fund projects that they have around the world. And we love uh, on behalf on your behalf to be able to bless them. So today, would you pray? Would you ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do to be a part of this moment in history to reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ? If I could, I'd love to close this service in a word of prayer and just seal the word that Ron Maddox shared with us. I pray uh, there are those listening who might say, I wanna be a part and give financially. There may be those who are watching that the Lord has a call on your life. I wanna, I, I pray that that just begins to seed something in you and that you would be able to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for you everywhere you go to be missional to share Christ with others. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this awesome service. Thank you for your presence that is uh, with us in this moment. Lord, I pray for each and every person who is watching right now, Lord, that you would do an incredible work in their heart and in their life. And Lord, as we seek you, God, we pray that your kingdom would continue to move forward in these days. Lord, we love you and thank you. Lord, I pray a blessing on Dr. Ron Maddox and thank uh, you for him and his calling, his mission. And Lord, that we had the opportunity to just hear what God is doing around the world. Lord, we continue to lift him up as well as all of the missionaries that we support. Lord, we pray your hand of protection upon them. We pray that you would bless them, anoint them. God, I pray that you would open doors that have been shut for years, that you would continue to open those doors that many would hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Pray that you will be blessed. Have an amazing week. I can't wait to share with you next Sunday in the culmination of our missions emphasis. Join us if you can in person or right here. We will be live streaming next Sunday. Be blessed. Have an awesome day.